Good morning, VIC family. What an amazing pleasure it is for me to be here worshiping with you this lovely Sunday morning in your homes with your families. I am so excited for what the Lord has for us today. I know that we will receive a timely word that is perfect for our season. I'm gonna lead us in prayer quickly this morning, but I just wanted to share something that I've tried to make a habit to do very often, is to wake up first thing in the morning and to just declare over my day that this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. And it's amazing how really that has just set the tone for my entire day. And I declare that over all of us today, that this day, this Sunday, is a day that the Lord has made and we rejoice and we are exceedingly glad in it. This morning I was reading in the book of Luke where Jesus was telling his disciples that if anyone cannot receive the kingdom of God like a little child, then they will not enter into it. And being a mother of two little children, I started thinking about how my, my two little children receive me as a parent. And one thing that I realized is that no matter what is going on around them, it could be a scary noise, it could be a joyful moment, my kids always look to me to see how I react and that greatly influences how they react. So for example, you know, it's been raining a lot lately. When it rains and um, there's thunder, my kids look to me and if I laugh at the thunder, they do the same thing. So that is my prayer this morning for each and every one of us that as we go through whatever seasons, whatever storms, whatever occasions in mountains or valleys, that we are looking to the Lord and he is our rock and he tells us how to react to that situation. We get our prompts from him, not from anything else that we see. So I'll just start in prayer and then I'll give you some time to pray with your family. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this beautiful day. I thank you for the gift of life. I thank you for the ability to be able to be at home with our families and just worship and look to you because you are omnipresent. I thank you, Heavenly Father, because you are with every single one of us at the same time, touching every single one of us in the exact way we need to be touched. I thank you, Lord, because you have given us everything that we need for this life. And we are exceedingly grateful. So Father, we just ask that you will give us the courage, you will give us the wisdom, you'll give us the understanding, you will give us the ability to always look to you in every situation that we're going through, knowing that you are God over our lives. And I ask and I pray that you will just open up our hearts this service to receive that word, that timely word, that touch that you have for us this morning. We put it all into your hands, Lord. We gather today not to glorify anybody else, but to glorify you. And we ask that you be lifted above all things, all worries, all thoughts, and you will be God over every single one of our homes. In Jesus' name. So there, you have five minutes. I'd like for you to stand up if you can, hold hands, gather together as a family, because this is such an amazing opportunity to just worship the Lord with your with your family. So I would ask that you gather together and just say a quick prayer. I'll see you in the service. God bless you.
Hi everyone! A very big welcome for joining us in Church at Your Home with Victory International Church. Whether you are joining us from different locations in Singapore, and even we have friends from overseas like Brazil, Peru, Colombia, Australia, Pintan, who are connecting with us now. We want to warmly welcome you and let you know that you are a part of BIC family. I believe God will use this time of connections to do an incredible work in you and to bless your family. We treasure your fellowship, therefore do communicate with us in YouTube chat so that we can see you. If you are not from Singapore and connecting with us, do let us know in the chat too. Hey Church, I want to share something important. As we are in the season of extended circuit breaker, we realize that there are many things in the past we have taken for granted, like meeting friends, go out as a family to enjoy eating in different places, coming to church, uh, meeting friends face-to-face, uh, uh, -face, catch up with each other, worship together physically. So the circuit breakers, in fact, brings a fresh revelation of what the Lord Jesus said in John chapter 4, verse 21, 23 to 24. A time is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor Jerusalem. For the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seek. God is spirit, and his worshippers must worship him in spirit and in truth. Brothers and sisters, in this season, we may not be able to meet, yet we have the spirit of God who unites us as one. In this season, we may not be able to gather in the temple, yet we have the truth and the light of Christ alive in us. Instead of going to church, we are the church now, and we are bringing church to our families and friends. The virus may divide us physically through social distancing, yet the Holy Spirit is uniting us spiritually. The Holy Spirit is uniting our hearts, our spirit as one body of Christ, so that we grow in one hope, one faith, and one shared love. And guess what? As for me, I'm getting excited for the day to come that I can see you face to face. So you see, God is doing a great work in us. He's increasing our love for one another, our desire to fellowship with one another. So be encouraged. God is in this house, the house of you and I. United this morning in spirit and in truth. For the Spirit of God is going to bless, to heal, and to bring hope. Okay, BIC, let's just get ready to praise our God today. And in this Sunday, as we sing this first song, which is about praising our God through all time, for his praise to ever be on our lips, let's just mean it with our hearts as we sing it to him. And wherever you are, sing it out, because he deserves all our praises. Your love is devoted, like a ring of solid gold, like a velvet sister, like a covenant. for to 
Hello church, today the Bible reading will be Exodus uh, chapter 16 from the second verse to 15. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only you had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in, and that's to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of Egypt. And in the morning you see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we that you should grumble against us? Moses also said, Will you know that it was the Lord when he gives you meat to eat in the evening and now the bread you want in the morning, because he has heard your grumbling against him? Who are we? You are not grumbling against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses told Aaron, Say to the entire Israelite community, Come before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked toward the desert, and there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, At the twilight you eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening quail came and covered the camp. And in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what, is, what it was. Moses said to them, this is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. What? Oh, <laughs> are we on? Sorry, I'm just trying to order my groceries and I can't get a delivery slot again. You know, what am I supposed to do if I can't go out and I can't get a delivery? Ah, oh, life. Well, anyways, this is not really how I wanted to start this morning. So, good morning, everyone. You normally see me singing or leading worship, but this morning I have a short message for you about God's provision. We just heard the scripture read from Exodus chapter 16, uh, where God gives the Israelites manna in the wilderness. So let's set the scene. There they are. The Israelites have been led out of Egypt, freed from slavery. They've miraculously crossed the Red Sea. Their enemies have been swept away and they are on their way to the promised land. They should be grateful, but they're not. They are grumbling. The whole community is complaining about their harsh conditions, their lack of freedom, the things they miss. They blame their circumstances. They criticize their leaders. 
They want to go back to the way things were before the wilderness. In verse 3, they say, if only we had died back in Egypt. We used to sit around together. We had pots of good lamb stew and we ate all the bread we wanted. But now you, Moses, you've brought us into this wilderness to starve us all to death. They've only been gone six weeks. And yes, it is tough in the wilderness. But the Israelites have been complaining a lot in those six weeks. They panic when they see the Egyptians pursuing them. They despair when they come to the Red Sea. And they turn against their leader, Moses, when they run out of water. Yet each time the Israelites start complaining, each time they cry out to God in despair, God hears their cries and he provides a way out. But now they're grumbling again. Had they forgotten? All those other times God had heard them and delivered them from slavery, from slaughter, even from thirst. Yes, they were in the wilderness. Yes, it was taking longer than they'd bargained for. But yes, God was looking out for them, providing for them every step of the way. And God was about to do it again. Verse 10. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, at twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. So Moses told them, uh, actually he had to tell them twice. That's probably why they're called the children of Israel. They never listen. But anyways, God did as he said. He sent down the bread from heaven, and his children were hungry, and so he provided for them. What was it like? Verse 14 says, When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. But was it just tasteless, freeze-dried rations? No, God is much more gracious than that. Verse 31 describes it as being white like coriander seed and tasting like wafers made with honey. And together with the quail that came in the evening, it was nutritious. It was all they needed. God provided for his children in the midst of their wilderness experience. But with that provision came a greater purpose. The manna and quail was not an all-you-can-eat buffet. You see, God's menu came with instructions. The people were to go out each day and gather only as much manna as they needed for that one day. And then on the sixth day of the week, they were to gather enough for two days. So how do you think the Israelites did? Did they follow God's instructions? Yep, you guessed it. Some did okay, but others, well, verse 20 says, some of them paid no attention to Moses. They kept part of the day's manna until the next morning. They didn't get away with it though, because God in his humorous, wise way, rewarded this disobedience with a consequence. In the morning, the manna was full of maggots and quite smelly. In fact, each day by noontime, the manna had melted away in the hot sun. So if someone was lazy and refused to gather it in the morning, they missed out. They needed to follow instructions. And on the sixth day of the week, again, some of the Israelites obeyed God. They baked and boiled extra manna and kept enough to eat the next morning. And it was good the next day, no maggots, no smell. But others did not obey. And the Bible says that when they went out on the seventh day to gather more manna, they found none. What was God's purpose in changing the routine for day six and seven, in giving such detailed instructions? Well, for day seven, God was providing not only food, he was providing a way for his people to keep the Sabbath day holy. Verse 23 says, tomorrow is to be a day of rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. The Israelites' routine 
where they worshipped, how they got their food, how they lived in community with one another. It had all changed since Egypt. But God provided for their physical and spiritual nourishment. God will always make a way for his people to worship him, to keep the Sabbath holy, even if that way might look a little different from what we're used to. Friends, God wants to provide for us, for me, for you, in the midst of our wilderness season. Things might look different. We might be worried about where our food will come from, whether we'll have a job for much longer, or what life will look like after this season of waiting is over. But we can trust our good and almighty Heavenly Father. He will provide for all of our physical and spiritual needs. But God's provision comes with a greater purpose. God's purpose in giving these instructions to the Israelites along with the manna was not just for health and safety, not just to be divinely restrictive or to be punitive. It was a faith growing exercise, a learning experience that came with a test. Verse four says, the people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, God says, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. God gently chastises Moses and the Israelites when they fail the test. How long will you refuse to keep my commands and my instructions, he says. And then he reminds them of his greater purpose. And God's ultimate purpose was that his people would come to know him. At twilight, you will eat meat, and in the morning, you will be filled with bread, and then you will know that I am the Lord your God. When we go through a wilderness experience, when our faith is being stretched, God's purpose for his children is always that we would come to know him on a deeper level. And the number one thing that helps us go deeper with God is obedience. When we obey God's instructions, when we can learn to do things his way, we can come to know his goodness, his character, his love, and his purpose for us. We can learn to trust in him alone, and our faith is strengthened, matured. James puts it this way, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. God provides for us in our wilderness so that we might know that he is the Lord our God. But you know what? God's purpose is not just for us, his children. It's for others as well. God knows that if his people will just start trusting him, others will notice and will turn to him as well. Later in the book of Exodus, Moses goes to his father-in-law, Jethro, who was a Midianite, a priest from a different religion. But when Jethro heard about everything that the Lord had done to Pharaoh, to the Egyptians, and for Israel's sake, and when he heard about all the hardships they had met along the way and how the Lord had saved them, Jethro was amazed. He exclaims, praise be to the Lord who has rescued you. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all other gods. And Jethro bowed down and worshiped God along with his son-in-law, Moses. So when God provides for you in the midst of your wilderness, don't keep it to yourself. God wants to strengthen your faith, but he also wants to bless your extended family, your friends. 
He wants others to know what he's done for you so that they can come and worship him too. And when our wilderness time is over, well, for the Israelites, it took 40 years, not because the distance was so great, but because their disobedience led them away from Canaan and into the desert. Now, I really hope it doesn't take me that long to learn the lessons God has for me during this time, but I'm pretty sure that I'll probably make some mistakes along the way. I'll probably grumble and complain, maybe against our leaders, maybe about my family. I'll miss the freedoms and activities that I had before this time. I especially miss being with you, the people that I love. And there's no doubt that at times I will wish we could go back to the way things were before the virus. But that's the amazing thing. God never leads us back to where we were before. If we do end up back in the desert, it's probably because of our own rebellious wanderings. We never come out of a wilderness experience the same way we went into it. And when that wilderness season is over, we always enter into something greater, something better, something so much more than what we longed for. We enter God's promised land. You see, God was leading the Israelites to a place that was so much better than their life before the wilderness, their life in Egypt. They just couldn't see it, despite the many promises he gave them along the way. He was always reminding them of his faithfulness and his promises were kept, they were true. Here's some of them from Exodus chapter 14 and 15. Verse 13 says, do not be afraid, stand firm and you will see the deliverance of the Lord that he will bring to you today. Verse 14, the Lord will fight for you you need only to be still. Chapter 15, verse 26 says this, If you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God, and if you do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. And later in Exodus, in chapter 19, God says this, If you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations, you will be my treasured people. You will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. And later in Deuteronomy, Do what is right and good in the Lord's sight, so that it may go well with you and you may go in and take over the good land that the Lord has promised you. God gives us so many promises in our wilderness and they're all waiting for us in his word to read and to claim. So what has God been saying to you during this season? If you're feeling overburdened with work or stressed, Hear Jesus' words from the book of Matthew. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. If you're worried about the future or how to make ends meet, read Jesus' words in Matthew chapter six. Do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. If you've been feeling isolated, alone, now that we can't go out and see each other, remember that God's word promises He is with you now and always. From Hebrews chapter 13, He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So read his word, claim his promises in your wilderness. Seek his purpose for you during this season. 
Remember God's faithfulness and trust him today. God has given us provision and purpose in our wilderness, just like he did for the Israelites. And he promises to bring us out of it into a better place. In John chapter 3, verses 14 to 17, Jesus himself says, Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is God's greatest promise. And this is God's ultimate purpose. God has made a way for us to know him, to receive all that we need from him, and to live in eternity with him. And that way is Jesus. Jesus is our bread of life. I tell you the truth. It is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. Jesus is our provision. Knowing him gives our lives purpose. And yes, we can trust his promises. In the midst of your wilderness, will you trust him today?
Thank you, Kathy, for the message that you shared today for us in VIC about God's provision, God's purpose, God's promise for us. God really provided for his children in the midst of the wilderness. The same way God will provide for us. Jesus is our provision. He is our bread of life. Let me ask you, in the midst of your wilderness, will you come to him today? Will you come to Jesus today? God's purpose is very clear that we can know him better on a deeper level. If we know him, we can learn to obey him. We can really relay in his word. The greatest promise is Jesus here to save us, to give us eternal life. But he also promised us, don't be afraid. Be still. I am the Lord. I am in control. I am the Lord who heals you. You will be my treasure possession. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Do not be anxious. Your heavenly Father knows what you need. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. God has made a way for us to know Him, to receive all we need from Him, but the most important, to live forever in His presence. How? Jesus is the way. He is our provision. He's the bread of life. Only in Him, only in Jesus Christ, we can have eternal life. Will you come to Him today? Let me pray for you. If you want to receive Christ in your life, can we pray together? Just say with me, Jesus, today, I hear your word. Come to my life. I need you. I recognize that without you, I cannot go anywhere. I need you. I recognize that I cannot walk without you. I confess my sins. I repent of my sins. I want to declare, Jesus, that you are my Lord, that you are my Savior. Help me to walk with you. Let me to live with you alone forever, for the rest of my life. If you pray with me, let me tell you something. You are starting a new life in Christ. Because in this moment, you open already your heart to receive Christ. He is with you. Just be sure to walk every day in His presence. Let me also pray for every one of us, for you that you are in your home, that we can walk in God's presence also. Jesus, I want to pray for all of us that we can recognize your provision in our life, that you take care of our physical needs, but also our spiritual needs. But the most important that you are our provision, that you are the bread of life in our life. Help us also to know you more and more in a deeply way, in a deepest way, that we can obey you, we can live according to you, that can walk according to you. The most important that we can recognize that you are the greatest promise. You came to save us. We are here walking in your presence. In some moment in our life, if this happens, when we don't know where to go, help us to remember that you say, don't be afraid. That you say, be still. I am the Lord. I am in control. I am the Lord who heals you. Don't be anxious. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Jesus, come to our lives, to our families. Take care of us every day. Help us to remember that you are our Lord, our Savior. I want to declare together with all of you that Jesus is our healer. Jesus, today we cry out to you. 
release your powerful word of healing upon Singapore in the world. Release this war from this virus that's killing so many people. We want to declare that you are powerful enough to do this. Heal our bodies, heal our souls, heal this land, your land. Help us to live for you alone. In the name of Jesus. Amen. What a powerful and timely message. I know God has touched me. I believe God is doing something in your hearts too. Now we have some announcement. Regarding children at home, just click at the link below. There are exciting kids resources from worship to interesting videos and fun activities for the kids so they will not miss what is going, God is going to do for them. As for tithes and offerings, the details are also in below that you can get the information and participate. Do continue to interact with us throughout the week. Though we are unable to meet physically, VIC has various programs you can connect with us online. Every Friday, we are having connect groups online. And we are going to kick off a campaign in our connect group course, Hope is Here. If you do not have a connect group, do contact our leaders. And on every Thursday, we have young adult group and we also have prayer online. It's open to all for the prayer online. And you can also contribute your prayer list. We also have men's group every Tuesday. We are excited to connect with you in your homes. For this reason, we have a video series of We Are The Church, shared by various members in BIC throughout the weekdays. And if you are unable to receive the broadcast, you can check them on the Facebook, or you can let your leaders know so that you can be included in the broadcast. Let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you that you are the one that we can truly rely on. You see and know each of our needs. You provide, you heal, and you restore. We pray for all the words we receive today, that it will grow and strengthen us. May you watch over us and protect us. Many things change fast now today, but you remain the same. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and glory, in this age and forevermore. Amen. One final thing, the live stream will remain open for the next 10 minutes. Do stay and fellowship with all of us. We can even recap what the main points that Kathy has shared or which points touch you and encourage you most. We love you. Have a blessed week ahead.